Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. I don't have to tell you that we are in a lot of trouble in this country. Today I'm going to present a call to action. Something that I want all of you to do to help. To help wake up the Americans who are sleeping, who are brainwashed and brain numbed by the television, by the media, by all the lies that they're given by the government and by the media. The call to action that I'm calling for today is this. On January the 20th, coming up, it's Inauguration Day. It's when Barack Obama is supposed to take his oath of office for the next four years uh, serving as a president. All right, January the 20th is on a Sunday this year, so he's actually going to take the oath of office on the 21st, which is Monday. So what I'm calling for is on those two days, on January the 20th and January the 21st, I'm asking all patriotic Americans to fly the American flag upside down. All right, now I want to explain what this means. Some of you may thinking that it's disrespectful for the flag to fly it upside down, similar to say burning in the flag, but that is not a, the case. As a matter of fact, according to the flag code, Title 36, USC Chapter 10, as amended by P PL 344 94th Congress, approved July 7th, 1976, the year of the bicentennial. Paragraph 176, Item A, and I quote, the flag should never be displayed with the Union down except as a signal of dire distress in instances of extreme danger to life or property. So it is not disrespectful of the flag or of the country to fly the flag upside down. It is simply a distress signal. And our country is in distress right now. And I know that you're aware of that. You know of everything that's, that's been coming down. I've done many videos on it in the past. I'm not going to get into all the details on that. A signal of dire distress and in instances of extreme danger to life and property. Extreme danger to life. What could be more dangerous to your life than having your Second Amendment taken away from you? Your Second Amendment is your ability to defend yourself. Now our lives are endangered in all sorts of ways. Uh, and we've been over a lot of these ways, but one in particular I want to concentrate on right now is the Second Amendment, your right to defend yourself. Extreme danger to life or property. How is our property in danger? Well, our property is endangered by confiscatory taxes. Confiscato confiscatory taxes are taxes that are so high that essentially what the government is doing is confiscating your property. For instance, my property taxes, even though my property values have gone down, my property taxes continue to increase. My property taxes have gotten to the point where I can barely afford it. It's the largest business expense that I have right now. And when, when, if they continue raising the property taxes, and meanwhile, during the Depression, uh, business continues to slack off and income continues to slack off, more and more people are going to be in default of their property taxes. And if, if you think that you really own your property, because I'm actually buying this property and I, I am owning, owning it uh, in just a matter of about two short years, I will have it completely paid off and I will own my office uh, and my house. However, I will never really own it because of these property taxes that keep going up and up and up. And the property taxes are getting to the point where essentially what I'm doing is I'm paying rent. Then as the depression kicks in, income uh, falls off, you don't pay your property taxes, you, you think you really own your property, guess what? Don't pay your property taxes and you find out who really owns your property. So yes, our property is in danger. They are moving into this country very rapidly with socialism and communism. And what do they do in socialism and communism? They seize property. They also seize lives. So certainly our life and property is in extreme danger. Now one thing I want to focus on <clears throat> with this inauguration coming up on January the 20th and 21st is Barack Obama. 
Barack Obama is not the president of these United States. The reason for that is he is in office illegitimately. It has been proven that he does not qualify to run for the office of president because he is not, does not fulfill the citizenship requirements. But besides that, or he does not deserve the office of presidency because the presidency was won through fraud. We, our election system in this country is completely fraudulent. Many of you know that during this last election cycle, I served as a delegate to the Republican Party, and I went to the state convention here in Missouri serving as a delegate. So I have experienced, uh, I was very involved with the campaign trying to get Ron Paul elected. Ron Paul was cheated out of this election. I saw it firsthand. He was cheated out of the Republican nomination. Or he was cheated, first of all, through the media, the media refusing to give him equal time. Or, and then when the caucuses began, it actually turned out that he won the first two caucuses in Iowa and Maine and also probably the third. And they admitted this. This was admitted in the papers much later, but much too late. Uh, he won the first caucus and he won the second caucus, but they just cheated him out of it. They threw out his votes and they gave it to Romney instead. All right, if Ron Paul had won, this is after the media has had repeatedly been telling the American people, Ron Paul can't win, Ron Paul can't win, Ron Paul can't win. Oh, he's fine, fella, he's, he's great. Unfortunately, he just can't win. And they brainwashed the American people into repeating that mantra, he can't win, he can't win, he can't win. Well, if he had been allowed to win that first caucus, Ron Paul would have won the Republican nomination with a landslide. And if he had won the first and the second caucus, he would have won every, almost every one after that with a landslide. And all the polls showed that Ron Paul would have beat Barack Obama. So through this is all election fraud. Also, there, the fraud has taken place on many other levels. These voting machines, there's all kinds of voting machine fraud going on. Uh, but if you, if you want the details on the election fraud, look up Beverly Harris. Beverly Harris has been doing research on this. She has a website. I don't have her website address in front of, front of me right now, but if you do a, a, a search for Beverly Harris election fraud, you'll come up with her website. She's been collecting uh, stories and statistics on election fraud for years. Our elections in this country are completely fraudulent. What does that mean when your elections are fraudulent? It means your government is fraudulent. We are, we are living under an occupied government. Alert, warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson, danger, Will Robinson. We are living under an occupied government. The government of the United States is completely illegitimate. The people are being brainwashed because they have complete control over everything that's in the media. The only media they don't have complete control of is their internet, and they have control of most of the internet as well. But you can get the truth on the internet, and that's why I can make videos like this, and other people like Alex Jones and all the other good people out there doing good work can continue making a videos letting people know about the truth. And that is why they are also going to shut down the internet. It is coming. Danger, alert, we are under attack. America is under attack. I cannot think of a more distressing time to fly the flag upside down. So I'm calling for all patriotic Americans. Sunday, January the 20th, and Monday, January the 21st, fly your flag upside down as a distress signal. We need to wake up all of these other Americans out of their trance. When people ask you why the flag is upside down, then you can explain it to them. Maybe we can wake up more Americans out of their trance. We're not going to win this info war until we wake up more Americans to what's going on. January the 20th and 21st, fly your flag upside down. If you want to fly beyond that point, fine. There are people who are already flying the flag upside down and have been flying it for a while. I did a research uh, on, on, uh, online and I found that a lot of people are flying their flag upside down now and they are mostly veterans. Why? Because veterans understand what it means to fly the flag upside down. Give you a little history. The first time 
that I'm aware of, the, flag, the American flag was ever flown upside down was during World, World, World War II. All right, during the war in the Pacific against Japan, uh, an, an American a military base on one of the islands in the Pacific was captured by the Japanese. The Japanese did not want the uh, uh, American army to realize that they had occupied this, uh, this base. And so what they did was they made, they wanted to make everything appear normal. So they had, they had the American soldiers uh, captured there. <coughs> Excuse me. But they allowed the uh, soldiers to go out every morning and put the flag up and fly the flag so that when the American airplanes flew over and they saw that everything appeared to be okay on this base and they wouldn't realize it was occupied. All right, what these soldiers did, they were very, very smart, is one day they went out and they ran the flag up the pole and they put the flag upside down. Well, the Japanese, not being that familiar with our flag, didn't even notice it. But the airplanes flying over did see it. They recognized it as a distress signal and they invaded and retook that post. All right, so I, I did a search on, uh, online to try to find exactly the details of that story and I couldn't find it. I just remember studying that from history. Uh, but it as appears to be something that has fall, fallen into the memory hole. But it is not unpatriotic to fly the flag upside down. It is a, a, a distress signal. We are in distress. January the 20th, January the 21st, the day that Barack Obama is taking his uh, uh, oath, Barack Obama is going to put his left hand on a Bible and raise his right hand, and he is going to swear allegiance to the Constitution. Yes, you heard it, the man who's the biggest enemy of the Constitution that I'm aware of in the history of our country is going to put his left hand on the Bible, raise his right hand, and swear an allegiance to the Constitution, the same Constitution that he is determined to destroy. He also did that, of course, during his first inauguration, and so he has been acting as a traitor ever since then. Every day he has broken his oath. All right, for that reason and that reason alone, the man should be impeached. He's not impeached because we have an occupied government. All of the government, I'm, um, I am active in the Republican Party, but I can tell you that the Republican Party is just as corrupt as the Democrats. Don't think that this is a Republican Democratic issue. I'm involved in the Republican Party because I'm trying to work to get the, the traitors thrown out of the party and try to take the party back, just like we're trying to take our nation back. Don't think that this is a Barack Obama problem. Barack Obama is a puppet. But on January the 20th and 21st, when he's taken his oath of office, it is going to be a good time to signal to the rest of America that our country is in distress, to try to wake up other Americans to what's going on in this country. Fly your flag upside down January the 20th and 21st. Get this message out to everybody. Send this video link to everybody you know. Make your own videos. Send it out in your newsletter. Send it out to all of your friends. Like it. Share it. Post it on Facebook. Tell everybody to like it and share it. Make your own videos. You could probably make one better than mine, but we've got to get out there and we've got to start doing something. We're fighting the soft war now, and the soft war is the war for the hearts and minds of the American people. And we're fighting the soft war so that we hopefully will never have to fight the hard war. Well, you think you're gonna fight for our Bill of Rights when the hard war comes? Well, let me tell you something. If you can't get out there and do something during the software, you think you're actually gonna get out there and do something during the hard war? But we're fighting the soft war for the hearts and minds of the American people now, so get out there and do it so we won't have to fight the hard war. Get out there and fly your flag upside down. Let people know. Spread this, spread the word. Tell everybody you know, danger, we are in danger. Danger, distress, distress, distress. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be pleased.